Hi, my name is Kat and you're watching Kat Rose Astrology. And today I'm going to be talking about the lunar cycle and creativity, uh, specifically how you can use the cycles of the moon, specifically how you can use the phases of the moon to sync up your creative work and find the benefits of doing that. So this is effectively based on the premise that there are there are cycles in nature. The old principle of as above, so below, as within, so without, that these these cycles that we can see, um, many of them are, are hooked up. One of them being, um, we know that the, the moon is linked up to the tides, or the tides um, are linked up to the moon. We know that the menstrual cycle is reflected in the, moon, the moon's phases as well. So what if creativity had a similar cycle that it could also be seen as, you know, in an ideal way, reflected in the phases of the moon? And what would it look like if we were to really try to harness that that moon energy and actually use that in our creative work? Well, this is something that I've been playing with for many years now. I've actually done a similar video on this. I thought I would do a refresh um, to bring like, a little bit more quality and watchability to to, a, to the new version of this. But so this all was popularized by Mr. Dane Roger, who we have a lot to thank for. He was a pioneering modern astrologer or transpersonal astrologer who wrote a lot about the moon. He has, he has a great book um, on the moon. I have it here. What is it called? The Lunation Cycle. It's called The Lunation Cycle. You can see it right here my messy messy book bookshelf um and it's a great book it's kind of hard to read it's very poetic um <laughs> but the there are little many 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 nuggets of gold in it if you um are patient enough for it but what you can extrapolate from it is this idea of the moon cycle and how helpful it can be to to guide almost all aspects of our life if if you're up for it Let's start with creativity, um, because even if you don't think that you're a creative person, maybe you're not an artist or whatever, that's fine. Um, that doesn't make somebody creative or not creative. You might be a really uncreative artist. Um, so what I'm thinking about when I'm thinking about creativity is our ability to um, generate useful novel ideas, things that um, make us see the world differently and, and teach us about the world. That's uh, I'm getting a bit distracted now because I'm thinking about um, Andrew Huberman has done a great series on creativity recently. And so go watch that to learn more about creativity. Uh, but very, very um, simply in my little world, creativity is my ability to solve problems. Um, creativity is my ability to you know bring something useful and novel to you. Um, creativity is my ability to think of something to eat for dinner, for God's sake. So um, creativity affects us in all aspects of life, in our work, in our family, in our relationships, in our business, and all of that. So what does the moon have to do with this? Well, if you're interested in astrology, you probably already have the kind of idea that what's happening up in the sky, um, it might not be causing what's happening down below. That's that's one model. Um, but if you're a bit more like me, it is reflecting what's happening down below. And if we can harmonize our lives consciously, it might, you know, with the heavens, it might make things flow a little bit easier. You're, the way I see it is that you're not going against the tide, you're going with the tide, um, which, yeah, it helps. So what would it look like if our creativity went with the tide or the moon? So, of course, this isn't going to be an exact science. Um, the moon's phases, I'm going to go through eight phases of the moon. But as you know, you could kind of break the moon's phases down into any number, really, because all you're doing is taking what is effectively like an, an analog process, the, the moon's waxing and waning in relation to our position here on Earth and the sun's light shining on the moon. That's what causes those lovely phases, those faces of the moon, I like to say. You can you can chop and change that into however many phases you like, because all you're doing is you're converting that analog signal, which is streamline, into like a digital signal um, that is like ones and zeros, or in our case, one through eight. <laughs> so it's it's not an exact science. What I found helpful is this eightfold lunar path um, and how that very, very nicely can reflect the different kinds of tasks or work we do, particularly when it comes to creativity, um, you know, tasks in your business and and your life as a whole.
So let's just start with, I'm going to sh- kind of like recap what those moon phases look like if you divide them into that eightfold path, um, which is a very common, commonly used way to, to divide up the moon. But let's start with the new moon. This is when the moon is dark in the sky. Um, what's really happening is the moon is very, very close to the sun. And because the sun's so bright in the day, we can't see the moon because the sun is kind of dominating. And then at night, because the sun is below the earth, or around the other side of the earth, we can't see the moon either because that's where the moon is too. So new moon, no visible moon in the sky. Uh, The next phase along is this waxing crescent, which is where you start to see that really beautiful slither, slither, sliver (laughs) with a V um, of moon forming. Uh, So this is that kind of idea of the the, the light is, is kind of dawning, the light is quickening, then we reach the first kind of quarter moon. This is the first quarter moon. This is often a time where um, I talk about the, the challenges of this. I'm going to break these down and what they actually mean in a sec. But that's kind of when the the archetypal rubber meets the archetypal road. That's when our visions from the new moon start to meet the, the hot, c- harsh, cold light of reality. Then we've got the waxing gibbous. So this is the moon that is getting to a full point. That's called the gibbous moon. Um, Then you get the full moon. That is when the moon has reached her optimum peak brightness in the sky. What's happened there is that the sun is effectively shining. It's it's full light, um, unblocked ideally by the earth. Otherwise, it would be an eclipse. The The sun is shining its light on the moon. We can see it in its full glory at night. Um, As the sun has gone down, the moon has risen. That's the full moon. Then we get to the disseminating moon. This is where it's kind of like the inverse of that gibbous moon we talked about. The disseminating moon or the or the waning gibbous would be the other word for this. Um, it's, it's it's not quite full anymore. Now we're, we're sort of kind of going, starting to go back down and into the, there's the first kind of stirring of darkness here. Then we get to the last quarter moon. So another quarter moon also related to a bit of a crisis moment, kind of like the nature of a square, if you know what I mean in astrology. Um, and this is more like a what Rajar called a crisis in consciousness or this idea that the physical world is kind of no longer meeting our needs Um meeting our archetypal vision. So initially it's like our, at the first quarter, it's like our vision is being confronted with reality. And in this case, the reality isn't matching up with our vision. That would be a simple way of seeing the quarter moons, but we'll we'll get more into this. And then finally, we have the balsamic moon or the the waning crescent. Uh, Balsamic is quite a nice word, balsamic vinegar. Um, But it's this idea that the moon is, is steadily darkening now Um, the dark is gaining and we're about to kind of go into that that darkest point again so naturally there's there's a sense of loss sense of decrease decline um okay so now that we've had a look at what that kind of visually we've got an idea of that waxing first half of the cycle and the waning um second half of the cycle It's nice to start with the new moon when we start thinking about creativity. And that's because this really is that inception moment. Demetra George explains in her book, Mysteries of the Dark Moon, that it's this phase that life, where life cleanses, revitalizes and transforms itself in its evolutionary development. So it really has that sense of newness to it. Um, It's still, I mean, at the, the, at the new moon, it's not recommended that we take loads of action. This is much more of a, a seeding moment, a what could be moment. Um, Dane Rajar is famous for likening this to the life cycle of a seed of a plant. Um, and in this phase, you might feel the urge to start something new, to make a fresh start or purge, or at least uh, create space for that. Um, and maybe that was something we did in the previous phase, but effectively we're starting with a blank canvas at the new moon. We might be feeling kind of impulsive, spontaneous, new ideas are coming. Um, We're feeling more receptive and perceptive. So how do we make the most of these kinds of energies? And and maybe maybe you don't feel like this at the new moon, but the idea is that if you actually give these phases their full opportunity, um, 
then we can actually make the most of of those those qualities, right? We can't always be finishing things. At some point, we need to start something. Similarly, we can't always be starting things. We need to be finishing them sometimes too. Um, And having this kind of constant clock in the sky, uh, which is so visible with the moon, um, is a really helpful way of syncing these things up. So some things to do, start researching whatever it is that is piquing your interest. And by research, this isn't like I need to find some answers. This is like, hmm, I'm kind of interested in Jack Parsons at the moment. Like what information is that there out there? I'm going to watch Strange Angel. I'm going to like um, just read the Wikipedia page. Whatever it is, it's, it's things that might be piquing your interest and you're giving yourself at the new moon opportunities to explore those. You might start recording some initial ideas. You might just start just spitballing things, just brainstorming, getting them out, um, getting maybe not even first drafts. We're just talking about like, let me make sure I capture the essence of what this idea is, because that is going to be the seed, the seed, the um, the fertile ground as well, that the ideas are going to, going to grow from. So it's a fun, it, it can be a really fun exploratory phase, that new moon. Now let's move to phase two. This is the crescent moon. So this is when we've taken some of that creative energy that um, kind of started to come through at the new moon and we're really using it to let our little seedlings grow. Uh, we're, we're nourishing them effectively. So much like a, a newly sprouted seed trying to break through the soil, there can be a little bit of um, some challenges here that start to emerge. But effectively, what we're going to be doing is starting to figure out what our ideas require in order for them to grow. So this might be uh, making sure that we are going to have the time that we need to carve out for this idea. Um, you know, looking at our schedule, making sure that um, this this idea has um, a little bit of room. You know, I've thought about this before. I've, I'm regularly getting <laughs> new ideas for things. And uh, the, the big question is, well, when will that fit into my schedule? If I've already got my, my videos that I want to put out and all of these other things, courses I'm teaching, um, things I'm doing for my, my community, what when will this, this other like task you know, when will that be done? So carving out some time for that, almost just like getting, getting your materials in order, right? That's, that's a part of any creative project. If you want to paint a big picture, um, you're thinking about, well, what materials will I need? How long will this take? When am I going to do it? Um, what kind of surfaces am I going to need in order to, to make that happen? So it's very much like getting your ducks in a row is, is this phase, this moon phase. Then we move on to the first quarter moon. This is when we are effectively getting challenged by um, what our limitations are, um, what is actually possible in terms of bringing this idea to life. So this is often when we're like, okay, I did want to paint like a, um, you know, a four by four meter mural, but actually realistically that that might not be so possible. It's the winter and I've, I just know where I'm going to no idea where I'm going to do that. Um, this is when we we start to dictate, um, start to determine what are some of the limitations that could prevent this project from you know taking off altogether. That's that's one of the paths that we might end up taking at this first quarter moon, which is like actually this this isn't going to work in this form. I might have to park this or um, or just you know very much uh, change change my my approach. The other path is much more um, action oriented. It's like, okay, uh, I've, I've worked out a limitation that I have. How am I going to make this work? Um, it's a problem solving phase. So some of those activities that we can start doing is, is really doing a kind of um, an assessment of, of what's possible. Um, you might even, if, if, if we're talking about a classic creative project, this might be a good time to write a brief. Or I, I, I kind of got these ideas bubbling around now. I know what um, what I'm going to need to to do that. Now, what are some of the limitations? What what skills might I need to learn uh, in order to to make this real? Who am I going to need to ask for help with? Um, and actually, maybe creating a kind of a brief for your project, defining your outcome that you're hoping to get to, um, the uh, breaking down that out um, that outcome into like little manageable tasks and so on. I mean, I'm trying to think about something kind of. Kind of simple as well. It's like if I want to create a lasagna, you know, we we figured out like how long it's going to take. We figured out the ingredients, and it's like, ah, crap. I I'm not sure I know how to make the the bolognese sauce or something. 
I don't know how to make lasagna at all. See, see, this is a perfect example of what a first quarter moment when you're like, oh crap, I, I literally don't know how to make lasagna. Um, now I need to go and Google a recipe um, on, a, on a very small uh, scale. So phase four is the, so let's move on to phase four. This is the gibbous moon. This is really great. Um, it's a great action taking moment. I mean, we've been taking actions throughout uh, this this process, but this is really like, or right, I'm just going to get messy. This is um, has a lovely nature of a trine. There's like a trine forming between um, the sun and the moon, roughly, um, and it's really um, a nice time. A lot of people love this as a um, in in magic to 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 do spells under this waxing gibbous. Um, so really, this is just about doing the thing and and taking action, um, experimenting. Uh, and you know, giving like we're going to get to the feedback part, but just know that this is much more of a let me do it. You don't need to share it with anyone just yet. Um, we're about to get to that place, but this is really just about having fun in the, the doing phase of the creative project. Um, a nice phrase that I heard the other day was shoot for a B minus. Like you don't need to make anything perfect at this phase. This is a just like let me just do the thing um and have something to work with at phase five this is where we get into the full moon and it's really um the first real reflection moment that we have you could just use the full moon to purely reflect on um the 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 project and just you know spend some time looking at it feeling what it and sorry it's, it's not necessarily a visual thing i get hung up on visual art but uh you know, tasting it if it's your lasagna, um, listening to it if it's a piece of music, uh, reading it if it's a piece of writing or work um, that you're doing online. The the thing that really comes here comes through here is also the purpose. Remembering our initial vision and our intentions for it, it's really like thinking about. We're about to be moving into the to the waning phase of the creative cycle, the, the lunar cycle. So we're starting to think about what is the purpose of this work? I had some ideas, you know, two weeks ago at the new moon, but what does this look like now? What, um, how has that changed? And how does my overall vision, um, how is that now taking shape now that I've seen or heard or tasted um, this, this, this physical thing? It's also a really good time to start to connect with others that you might be able to share your work with. Uh, I'm going to get into the sharing in the next phase, but effectively full moon into the disseminating moon. This is really when we're able to start um, uh, getting feedback from other people. So at least at the full moon, identify perhaps the people who um, whose opinions that you can trust. Right. There are some people on the Internet, the trolls, the, you know, the hecklers, you, you don't need to pay attention to them. But there might be some people out there um, and, you know, close to you whose opinions that you really trust. So making sure that you've got a note of who those people are. Then we're going to move into phase six. This is the disseminating moon. And this really is about getting your work out into the world. You're literally like disseminating, you're spreading your seeds around. Um, this could be a time to share your work on social media, even if it's not finished. Maybe it's like a work in progress. Maybe you share your work with colleagues or peers for feedback. You're basically communicating about your work um, and telling other people about your process and what your um, at the moment what your vision is for it. Um, so the idea is that you're not doing this too much earlier because, uh, as we all know, too many cooks for the broth and like too many outside opinions too early on can just stamp out what could be a really beautiful idea. Um, but usually something just after the full moon phase archetypally is thought to be more robust and able to to benefit from outside um, influence phase seven so now we're at the last quarter moon it's another kind of crisis point so really this is a point where we're actually taking on board some of that feedback which can feel like a bit of a crisis maybe we're realizing that um you know the the thing that we've created like I said at the beginning, isn't quite matching up with our um, our vision of it. So that can be the crisis here. We're evaluating where existing habits or patterns might have been holding us back. If you have a certain way of doing things, maybe that's creeped in. You realize that now it's not going to work for this project. Um, and you can also start to think, think, you know, this isn't just a time of like breaking down. We're also starting to think about um, 
ways that we can improve uh, upon this to move forward in the next cycle. Really important phase. And finally, we have the balsamic moon. And really, this is kind of the, the wrapping up phase. You can either, you know, call it a day with this particular project, or you can commence, um, plan to co- start com- planning to commence a new phase of iterations uh, to, to begin the new cycle with um, at the new moon. But really, the balsamic moment is the moment of, you know, do I um, wrap this up? Do I scrap it? Or do I just, you know, reiterate it next time? Um, it really is the the ultimate kind of inner critic phase. So we've had the kind of criticism from the outside world. We've kind of tried to be um, objective with ourselves and just to figure out, okay, well, I need to tweak this and tweak that. But ultimately, this is a very um, a time of going inward and really sitting with with ourselves and sitting with the potential of endings and loss and the, the the challenges that come from stripping something away that that is no longer working and that can be in in any area of life that kind of balsamic moon um that dark moon as it were um always carries with it this a bit of a bit of melancholy or, or maybe a lot of melancholy um but equally it's an important part of any um cycle to get used to and if you find that you're somebody who's always starting things but never finishing them um really good to get to know the balsamic phase of the moon can really help you see, okay, well, why is it that I I dread endings? Or why is it that I, I don't want to complete things? Is it because I'm worried that I'll never get to that that perfect vision that I had in my head? These are all questions for the balsamic moon phase. So really worth getting to know this one. So I've just run through all the eight phases. If you're interested in um, kind of taking this further, I do recommend checking out your own um, lunation phase. So what phase were you born under? I was born under the disseminating moon phase. So no surprises. I like to share what I've learned with other people. Um, If you're somebody who's born at the new moon phase, then maybe you are that person who is always, you know, you're the visionary who who has these great new ideas and maybe you need other people to help you manifest those, but ultimately you are that that visionary. It's helpful to know your own moon phase because you're probably going to have um, a deep resonation with a resonation, a resonance with one of these phases. Maybe you can have more challenges with the other um, phases. Um, And it's also helpful just to reflect on the moon when it returns back to your um, lunar phase each month. It won't be in the same sign necessarily as your birth moon same zodiac sign but just looking at that phase paying attention to that phase and getting to know it uh highly recommended so i hope that was helpful uh helpful run through of the eight moon phases and how you can use them in your creative work if you're interested in learning more about these moon phases and uh basically designing your life in accordance with the moon and um what magic is possible when we do that? Well, I recommend subscribing to this channel if you haven't already, because there will be more content coming out on that in the coming months. Um, Also check out my Instagram page. I'm posting more stuff about this kind of sinking your life with the moon uh, over there. Just go to Cat Rose Astrology um, on Instagram. And if you wanted to check out my work on my website, you can do that too. So go to catroseastrology.com. You'll see my birth chart readings. You can join my astrology circle there. Um, check out my book, Discovering Your Personal Diamond, and much, much more. I've done enough chatting, I think, for one day. Um, over to you. Do you like this idea of syncing your creativity with the moon? Have you ever tried this? Leave me a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. All right, take care, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.